Hey, what's up guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and I'm back with another video tutorial on Core Java programming. So today's topic is going to be classes and objects and we're going to be looking into the theoretical as well as practical aspect of this topic. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get a good idea about how to go about classes and objects and that we see a practical program as well. So with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So in the previous video, we just took an introduction to what is object oriented programming and we saw some features. We saw what is procedural oriented programming versus object oriented programming and we also took a scenario for better understanding the oops concept. So if you have missed that video, you can check it out in this playlist. And then this is the continuation wherein we are discussing more on classes and objects. So what exactly is a class? Now theoretically in general, a class is a template or a blueprint from which objects are created. So it is basically a logical entity and it cannot be physical. By logical entity, I mean it does not have any memory allocation when your program is running. The memory allocation is actually done to the object and not the class. That's why it is said it's not physical. So what does a class contain in Java? So basically a class has fields like variables, then it has methods. Methods are nothing but functions and they are called methods in Java. It has constructors which we will see in further video tutorials. It has other blocks and nested class and interfaces. Also we will be seeing all these in further videos. But right now we will just take a very basic look in the programming part which we will see in a minute. So class can be of a car, it can be a person, it can be a dog, it can be animal thing, object, anything. And why do we need this class? So basically class as I mentioned is a template and it has these combinations of different fields, right? So if you want to make your own custom data type, you can use this class. So you can make an analogy with the data type. So in general we have variables, right? The basic variables like int, float. Similarly class can act as our inbuilt data type. Okay, so this was a little bit theory about classes and I know it's a little bit theoretical but you'll understand it in a more clear way when we move ahead in this tutorial. So let's move on and see what an object is. So we've seen what is a class, now let's see what is an object. So an entity that has state and behavior is known as object. Okay, so what does state and behavior mean in terms of programming? So basically an object has three characteristics, a state that represents data value of an object. So any data member inside that object is basically its state. So it is holding some value. The next thing is behavior. So behavior represents the functionality. So this is basically the method that the object has. And the third one is identity, which is basically a unique ID, which is not visible to external users, but it is used in internally by the JVM. So we just need to focus on the first and second characteristics that is state and behavior. And more importantly, an object is basically derived out of a class. So let's see the comparison between the two. So relation between class and object. Okay. So object is an instance of a class. So again, one more new keyword that is instance is introduced over here. So let's, let's assume in a real world scenario, if you are into a construction site, you always have the engineers always have basically a blueprint, right? So you first make a blueprint model that is the prototype, which can be considered as a class in terms of programming. And then when we actually make the building, which is the real world entity, you can consider that as an object. So you can see over here, this small blueprint is considered as a class and then making a replica of that class as object. So this is the actual building, right? So you can see I've named it object one. Now, once you have the prototype ready, you can create n number of objects, right? So that's, that's how class and objects work. So you can consider class just as a template. So you probably must have used Microsoft Word or some other applications, which has some inbuilt templates, right? So we directly use them. And when we use them, we customize them according to our needs. So that template is considered as a class. And when we actually use it, we are actually making an object. So you can make that analogy, right? So that's how it works. So class is a template or a blueprint from which objects are created. So in order to create that object, we have to have a class. So object is an instance. Instance is one entity that is one result of a class. Now, even if this all is a little bit complicated to you, there is another way to look at classes and objects consider or compare it with the procedural part. So in another way, we can say that objects are variables of type class. So in procedural part, we have our inbuilt variables, right? Integer variable float, then we have string and then we have all those basic variables, right? Character variables. So those variables have some data type, correct? So consider this class as our inbuilt data type that we create because it will have multiple data members that is the variables, it will have a bundle of variables and some functions or methods that will operate on that variables. So consider that as a custom data type and 
the object you can consider as the variable name actually. So that's another way to look at classes and objects. So before we move on to the actual programming part, there are some things that you need to understand because they'll be coming in further tutorials and in this video itself in the programming part. So the first thing is instance variable in Java. So what is an instance variable? We already know what a variable is, but what is an instance variable? So a variable which is created inside the class, but outside any method is known as instance variable. Essentially a variable which is inside a class, but it is not inside any method that is any function. So that's an instance variable and it is called an instance variable because it does not get any memory allocation till runtime. Okay. So during compile time, it, that variable is not created in the memory. It gets memory only at runtime when the object is created. And you will see that and you'll understand that in detail when we see the program, I'll explain to you what an instance variable is. Then we have methods in Java. Now I know we have to discuss methods in a separate topic in more detail because that's a little big concept or big topic to cover. So in Java method is like a function. So this is just another name. It's basically function only, but just, the, just that it is inside a class. So it's known as a method and it is used to expose behavior. Behavior means the functionality. See, for example, addition, subtraction, printing of messages, taking of input, those kind of functions or methods. So what are the advantages of methods? Code reusability, code optimization. And we'll see all, all of them in detail when I create a separate video on methods in Java. And lastly, we have the new keyword in Java. So the new keyword is used to allocate memory at runtime. So when you're creating an object, we need to allocate the memory, right? So the class does not have any memory until unless we create the object, which is derived from this class. So in the function, when we say new and then the class name, the memory is allocated to that object. Also do note that all objects get memory in the heap memory area. So there are two memory areas in your RAM, basically the stack and the heap. Now those are concepts in data structures, which I don't want to get into detail as of now, but just remember that all objects get memory in heap memory area. Okay. This was a lot of theory and I know you want to see the practical program. So let's move on to the practical aspect. Okay. So quickly open up your NetBeans IDE and I would recommend that you code along with me for the best practice because this is probably your first program in terms of object oriented programming. So let's start off. So I have already created a project and I've named it my student example.java. So you can see my class is already created for me. Now what I'm going to do is, so we already have a class created, right? So inside this class, but outside the main function. So you can see I'm outside the main function, right? I'm going to say int ID and I'm going to say string name. So I have just created two instance variables because they are inside the class, but they are not inside any function, right? So these are instance variables. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is inside the main function, I will say, I will copy this entire name. That is the class name. I will say my student example object one. So what I'm doing is this is the class name. This is my name of the object. And I'm going to say equal to new. And if I hit control space, it will give me that same my student example and opening and closing round brackets. So this is the syntax when we want to create or instantiate an object. So this is where the memory allocation happens. So what happens in the memory is object one is created with int ID and string name. So this object, which is of type my student example, will have these two data members inside it because I said new. So the memory is allocated, right? Now what I'm going to say is system dot out dot print ln. I'm just going to print the values inside these two instance variables of the object. So I'm going to say object one dot ID. I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here and I'm going to say name. Now before that, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to assign some values also. So I'll say object one dot ID is equal to one copy this and paste it over here. Object one dot name is equal to my name. Okay. So in order to access the individual instance variables or member variables inside the object, we have to use this dot operator. Okay. Let's try to save this and let's try to run this and let's see if our program works. So there you go. You can see I have got the output one and Tanmay, which means our program is working perfectly fine. Okay. So this was a very simple example. Now there is another way where we can go about this is that we can create a separate class also. So everything we were doing in this class, right up until now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate class, which is going to be outside this main 
my student example class so we can do that also in this same file so what i'm going to say is i'm going to say class student okay opening and closing curly brackets what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy or cut this part and paste it over here so now we have our own new class which is named as student and it has that two data members so you can see a error is throwing because i have used this class so what i'm going to say is i'm just going to replace this student over here and over here so now the object one is of type student and this is that class that we've created so let's try to save this and run this so there you go again this is working fine right so what i did is instead of creating the instance variables inside this same class i created a separate class which is outside this my student example now i can have one more class or n number of classes in this file outside this class so basically this my student example class is just holding our public static void main function now this is very important because the main function is the starting point or the starting point of execution of this program right so it has to exist in any of the class and it is very necessary otherwise the my student example class is actually not doing anything else apart from holding the void main function so this was just a very basic example of creating an object from a class now i can also create one more object so i can say student obj2 so this is just declaring the object and i'm not using the new keyword in this line itself so i'm not still allocated any memory on the next line i can say obj2 is equal to new and then student opening and closing round brackets so this is the basic syntax essentially what is happening is the constructor is called so we haven't yet discussed about constructor so that is for another tutorial right now just understand that this is how the syntax goes when we create an object so now i can say obj2 dot id is equal to 2 and obj2 dot name is equal to simple snippets and then again just copy these two lines and paste it for obj2 and they should also work perfectly fine let me just try to run this and there you go you can see id2 and simple snippets is being printed on the output screen so now i can have n number of objects and each object will hold its individual id and name so this is where your program gets simplified when we want to create a custom class which will hold n number of instance variables so that's where it replicates the real world scenario in a very good way and i haven't used the methods over here because i want to discuss about methods in a separate tutorial so that i give you better understanding of what method is and how it works and how it helps so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of classes and objects and how to create an object how to create a class how to instantiate an object using the new keyword what are instance variables and so on so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial so i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace